107, the 107th Psalm. I'd like for you to open your Bibles there if you would please. I know that we put the scriptures up for you on the board, but gosh, there ain't nothing like you having Word of God in your lap. And um, listen, God speaks to you. You might want to mark something or make a reference beside it so that you can go back later. And let God speak to you concerning that thing that He was talking to you about. And I'm, this morning, my sermon is on wor- is on the subject of worthy of remembrance. Worthy of remembrance. As as you guys know, uh, because of Memorial Day, we oftentimes have Brother Mike come and he does the the missing man ceremony thing that we we love so much to see. And and uh, but the, trying to make sure that we never forget. That we always remember what has taken place in the past that enables us to be where we are today. So the psalmist is no different. So let me read scriptures, verse 1 through 9, Psalm 107, 1 through 9. I'm going to try to read without commentary. Y'all pray for me. And then I'm going to try to come with the message today. So y'all pray for me. It is a difficult thing for me. Uh, 107 verse 1 says this, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. (laughs) Again, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. And He led them forth by the right way that they may go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. Whoa, good scripture. See, I made it. Oh, I wanted to stop. But listen, you, uh, the, what a wonderful testimony of what we see. I want to point out back in verse number one that it says, oh, give thanks. It's about showing our gratitude. Let me stop for a second and tell you something. I think because we go through times like we're going through right now, it's difficult for us as believers. It's, it's difficult for anybody, uh, but believers even have trouble going through changes, man. Uh, we wonder, because we think when we're serving the Lord that everything is now supposed to be smooth sailing for us, right? But listen, I'm going to tell you, we, we are, you, you probably never said this before. I wrote this down. This is, why is this happening to me? I looked for light, but only darkness came. I looked for peace, but I only found trouble. I resolved in my heart to stand firm in the Lord, but now He seems to be hiding His face from me. I am troubled. Maybe you said something like, it was only yesterday that I could clearly see, but today everything seems so dim and cloudy. Hmm? Hmm? That, maybe you're thinking to today that even your hopes are crushed and the things that you thought yesterday was certainly going to happen today, you're feeling hopeless about. Maybe you said something like, yesterday I could climb to the top of the mountain and look over into the promised land and rejoice with confidence in my future inheritance because I knew God was going to carry me in. But today, my spirit... Is broken. I have no hopes. All I have is a bunch of fears. I've got no joy. I'm just full of distress. And I wonder, I wonder in my heart and in my mind, I wonder, is this part of God's plan 
with me? Can this really be the way that God is going to bring me into heaven? Is this my path that God has laid for me? The answer is, in just a word, yes. Yes, it is. See, we get the mistaken identity sometimes that, that because we have become the children of God and we are seeking to follow after God, that everything in our life is supposed to be rosy. We actually, we believe this myth right here. How about this? We believe that blessings are always things that happen to us that we like. We, we think that blessings are things that happen to us that are good or that we like. We don't think that a blessing can be adverse. We think that blessings always have to be something happened that we long for. But let me tell you, uh, the, 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 the breakdown in your faith when you have felt like you've been pummeled by something that has happened in your life or the darkness that comes into your mind or the, uh, the fainting of your hope, uh, these are things that God uses uh, to make you ready yeah, that's right. to build you. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 you, you're going to receive that great inheritance. That's not changed. It'll come soon enough. But God's got a plan for you before you cross over. Yeah. Remember, he led those children for 40 years in the wilderness. And they saw a lot of despair. Listen, this is how God works, and I'm, I'm going to try to move quickly. God works by things that are like in honor or in dishonor. He works by good news, and He works by bad news. He works by giving you plenty and overflow. He also works through causing you to go through poverty and not having enough sometimes. He works by joy, by giving you that that really makes you smile. He also works through things that causes you to cry and to frown. He works through distresses. He works by bringing peace and comfort. I'm glad when that happens. But I want you to know He also works through times of distress and persecution. He works through times whenever you'd rather not be there. And you'd rather not have gone through what you've gone through. But He uses... All of these things. He uses our successes. He uses our defeats. He uses every one of these things in our lives to help us on our way to becoming the vessels that God's called us to believe. When I look at these verses in Psalm 107, I saw in verse number 1 as I try to relate this to you today, that the very first thing I see is an attitude of gratitude. Verse number one, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because He's good. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to Him because of who He is. You just thank Him. You have a thankful attitude toward the Lord, uh, not because of what He has done, but because of who He is. He's good, and His mercy endures forever. Just, just be grateful to Him. Give thanks unto the Lord. I said it this morning in front of some folks, if, if all He ever done was save me and I never got another blessing, He's already given me more than I deserve. I've already received so much that I could never pay Him back. If I gave my entire existence to Him, which I pray to do, it could not be enough. Second verse says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed. I'm, when I look at that, I believe not only are we, do we need to have an attitude of gratitude, I think we need to reinforce that attitude with, um, with testimonies, with reminding others and mostly ourselves of where God's brought me from. Amen? If you could just stop sometime, oh, I'm about to get, I'm, I want to run, but I'm too old and fat and clumsy. I want you to know that if we could just stop sometime and think about all that the Lord has done and what He has brought us through, sometimes those mully grubs would just kind of 
the, the things that we think are so huge and overwhelming would kind of be pushed out of the way. And we would be into a state of worship and praise to the Lord simply because we remember that I was down and out, but God delivered me out of my distresses. Amen. I was in trouble. I, I wandered in the wilderness and I was hungry and I was thirsty like it said about the children of Israel. We were lost. We were, we were punished and persecuted by, by those that we passed through, but God delivered me and God raised me up. And I'm in a better place today than I've ever been. Why? Because I went through not only the good times, I went through the troubled times and God delivered me. One of the greatest comforts to a believer is Psalm 23 that, the, that he says that though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Amen. Amen. The idea that, that it doesn't matter what the circumstance or the situation is, God yeah. is there to deliver us from it, through it. So verse 2, I believe, says that the redeemed of the Lord should say so. We do testimonies around here all the time. We ask not only uh, for prayer requests, we ask for praise reports. We say, well, somebody needs to talk about what good thing the Lord has done. Quit dwelling on what you don't got, and won't you stand up? Amen. Won't, you take a, won't you take a minute just to thank Him for what He has already done? You remember the ten lepers? Anybody remember the ten lepers? Amen. Right. The ten lepers came and, and Jesus saw them afar off and they were, cry, he, they were crying out to him. And he said, what do you want? He said, that we might be cleansed. Yeah. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. And while they were in the going, whew, something climbing up my spine. While they were in the going, the Bible says that they were cleansed, every one of them. That's right. One of them stopped and went back. And he fell down at the feet of Jesus and began to worship, right? Amen. And he said, Jesus, you know what Jesus said? He said, hey, I thought there was ten of you. Where's the other nine? Only one comes back. I think that's a picture of the church today. Too many times just the very, very few are truly thankful. We'll, we'll come back, we'll make the effort. Well, make the effort to say, God, I was in distress and you delivered me. The Lord. Yeah, what I'm talking about is, a, is, is the idea of having a, a, a remembrance. What things are worthy to remember. You can dwell on the bad stuff if you want. That stuff ain't worth remembering. The things that are worthy of remembrance are the stuff that we build our current character on. If you remember the bad stuff, you remember that, yeah, I was there, but I was stuck in the mire. His hand reached for the... He raised me up, amen. He put my feet on the solid rock. He established my going. He delivered me out of the jaws of death. He saved me from my enemy. He put me on a right path. I was almost dead. God raised me up. Yeah, if you're going to remember the bad, remember how he delivered you from the bad. Instead of dwelling in that shadow. Things that are worthy of remembrance. Today we remember, remember those that lost their lives in the defense of our freedoms and our liberty. Those are worthy to remember. Worthy. Man, that's an honorable sacrifice. We give honor to that. We, every year, every year we, we have Easter that comes around and we celebrate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ because He's worthy. Yeah. It's a worthy sacrifice. We recognize it wasn't a pretty day. We, we know there's never been a darker day in all the history of the universe than when the Son of God was beaten mercilessly and then crucified on a cross for our sins. Not a darker day in all of history. But that dark day had the shadow drove away three days later, amen. When he came forth out of that tomb and showed himself to be alive in power and victory over death, victory over hell, and victory over the grave, amen. Alive, not only alive, but alive forevermore, amen. Never to die again, never to suffer at the hands of men again. And he has victory over sin that he gives to every believer. I'm getting off my path. I got to get back. 
Hmm. The third thing I wanted to point out, verse number 7. I, I told you, first of all, he shows we, we got to have an attitude of gratitude in verse 1, give thanks. Verse 2, the, the, the redeemed of the Lord should say so. Man, you should be quick, yes. quick to brag on God. Yes. Quick to brag on Every time somebody asks you something, let me tell you what, God, what God's did. i gotta, I'm, I got to move on. I just want you to remember that. Don't forget that. Brag on the Lord. Yes. Anyway, number 3, verse 7. Look at what he did. He led them forth by the right way. Now, this really perplexed me because they were going in circles. They were crossing into places that, they, that you thought, man, and, and then when it come time for them to go into the promised land, he's taking them over in the swelling of the Jordan. It's, it's when the river is overflowed its banks. It, it's, it's the worst time, po and it's in the worst place possible. We're going to take the greatest city that they've got over there. Jericho's going to be our first battle. Well, that, who got that plan up? Shouldn't we take Take on the little guys first. But anyway, God brings them by the right way. Now, I know you could probably complain about the way that you've come thus far. You could probably say, I don't know why I had to go through that. I don't know why I've had to endure this. I don't know why this keeps coming into my life. But I believe that God's taking you by the right way. I believe He's leading you in the path that God has determined because there's things in your life that you need to learn about yourself and about Him as your God. It's the right path. It's the right way. The Bible tells us that the, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He directs your path whenever you lean on Him and you trust in His understanding and not yours. He leads your path. So if we believe that, then the path I'm on is the right way. Oh, I can't, I can't get over the fact that we, we say we trust Him, and yet whenever that way gets a little bit rough, we're looking to take a, a way around it. We start going to Google. Is there a way to get around? There's a traffic jam. There's a boulder in the way. There's a washout in the road. There's trouble ahead. There's difficulty in my path. I need to find an alternative route. And you want to get around it. And he said, I'll go with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We'll walk through it together. You might be going through what you think is, brother, buddy, you, you, it's easy for you to preach. You're not going through nothing. You think what you want to think. Amen. We all have our crosses to bear. Right. But whatever you're going through right now, listen, the, the, whole added, the whole thing about it may be 10% of what has happened to you, and the, and the real issue may be the 90% of how you've responded to what happened to you. If you could turn around the way you respond to the incident, it might change your whole perspective about the incident. Yeah. Woo! Could God bring a blessing out of catastrophe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, if, if God, he took the darkest day in history that I told you about, and he made it the brightest day ever. Uh, the Bible tells us about that day, that this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's talking about the day of the crucifixion, the darkest day, because he has made that death, he has made that sacrifice to be life to everyone who believes. It took a tragedy to bring forth the greatest event of all. And that is the, the conquering of death, hell, and the grave by the Son of God and His sacrifice. The Lamb of God sacrificed one time, took care of the problem that all the bulls and the goats and the turtle doves and all the animals that the Hebrews sacrificed for centuries could never do. Not one sin, not one sin ever got paid for by them. And Jesus one time shed His blood. And every man's woman, boy and girl's sin got settled forever. Amen. By grace through faith you can have that done for you. Mm. That's verse number 7. He took us in the right path. I, I, I think with all of my heart, I think you need the good in your life. I know you need good. I know you need encouragement. But I also think you need the bad times. Amen. I think you need the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I think you got to have those things to bring about the will of God in your life because you need to know how to trust Him in the troubled times. You need to know how to praise Him in the good times. Amen? And in the bad. And then you got to remember that that way that He's taken you, in verse 7 it says, He led them in the right way. 
in the right way. That they may go to a city of habitation. That they might be prepared to go into the place to receive the reward that God had established for them. Verse number 8. It says, Oh that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. Uh, he is worthy. We're talking about worthy of remembrance. He's worthy of our praise and our remembrance. Yeah. He is worthy. He said of, of all that He is and all that He has done, He's worthy of our praise. Listen, if you can't praise the Lord because of His goodness, like it says here, praise the Lord for His goodness and His wonderful works to the children of men. If you can't praise God for who He is and what He's done, you ain't got a praise coming. I don't know, you, you, you're of all men most miserable. Uh, there, there's a real tragedy in your life. If you can't say, well, brother, buddy, I can't think of anything to thank the Lord about this week. You, oh my goodness. There's a real issue right there. There's a problem in your life. You, you've been way too focused on the negative. You're way too focused on what you don't got. You're, way, you're, look, you're looking way down in the dark. Man, you're blinded. You need to have your eyes opened. Then lastly, verse number 9. It says, why? Because he, he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. I believe the end result of, of having an attitude of gratitude, the end result of, of reinforcing it with testimonies, and the end result of recognizing that this is the path that God has chose for me, the end result of praising Him simply for who He is and what He's done, is the end result is a satisfied soul. You see it right there in verse number 9. A satisfied soul that's filled with countless blessings of goodness. It's a satisfied soul that just kind of sits back and says, man, if I could have anything that I want, if God was to come to me like He did to Solomon and say, just ask whatever you want, I'll give it. I would say, Lord, you've already blessed me above abundance. I don't know anything to ask for. Uh, Michael Combs sang a song that, uh, that he wrote that said uh, his, his cup was running over and his, 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 into the saucer. And, and the idea that, um, that if if, if he was to complain and ask for more, how guilty he would feel because he's already blessed more than he deserves. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup's overrun. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't ask for more blessings. Right. If God was to say, what would you want me to give you? Well, you want riches. You want the life of your enemy. Like he did to Solomon. You want, what do you want? What do you want? I'll give it to you. I said, Lord, I can't hardly handle what you've already given me. I, I don't deserve what you've already poured on me. I know, oh Lord, no, just your presence. That's all I want. Just your love. That's all I want. Just to know that you're with me and that I'm yours is all I really need. Today, it says there in verse number 9, this is the blessing. When it, when it talks about the end result of the blessing, it's, it doesn't say he satisfies the longing soul with money, riches, power, notoriety, great health. He satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. He just he changes the bitterness that's in you to betterness. Yeah, amen. He takes that bitterness and makes it better. And he, and, he, and he turns the whole attitude of the individual from a sunken down, negative, rotten sinner laden in sin to a victorious, washed in the blood child of God who has victory over sin who doesn't waller underneath the oppression of sin, but praises God in victory over sin, no matter what may be occurring. Right. Hey, listen, because you have victory, I'm fixing to close. Brother Garnett, if you'll get ready, Brother Rick. Listen, because you have victory, do not get the idea there'll never be another battle. Because you're more than conquerors, don't you think you won't have a skirmish? What you do got, though, is the victory, amen. amen. It's the victory. I, listen, I, I'm going I'm to close with this. Don't ever think that your sorrows or your troubles in your life are outside of God's plan. Don't ever think that God was asleep 
And the devil slipped something in that, that took you down another road. He's taking you by the right way, according to verse number 7. You, you got to remember that these, these things that come, they're necessary parts of your life. My daddy used to talk about, and of course, daddy was a very simple, plain, easy to understand guy. He used to say all the time, it takes a positive and a negative. He said, your car won't run without it. Amen. You can't crank it. That battery won't work unless you hook up both posts. You got to have the positive and you got to have the negative. And this, this, these verses remind us of the things that we, that we experience in our life are brought to us by God for our good. Closing remark is this. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that we must pass through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of God. Did you know that? In chapter 14, the book of Acts says... We must pass through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of God. There's some things you need to, can I have one more minute? When God called Abraham and called him, he said, get out of the country that you're in. I want you to go. I'm going to show you another country. Man, he journeyed Abraham for a while. He was preparing Abraham for the task that he had before him. It didn't happen overnight. When, when God called Joseph and gave him the dream that he was going to be a great ruler, remember? Next thing he's in the pit. His brothers wanted to kill him. Then they sold him for slavery. Then he's in Egypt under slavery. He, then he's in prison, accused of rape. I mean, he's uh, from here to here to here, it seems like it's going wrong. It's the path that God chose for him. What's God doing? He's building, he's building a leader. He's building a man of God. He's building somebody. David, look at the, he was, David was a young boy and he was anointed by Samuel that he's going to be the king. And he goes through trouble. The king hates him. King's trying to kill him. As he grows up, he becomes the, the greatest warrior in the kingdom and the king hates him even more. But that's how God prepared David for the throne. What you're going through. Can you look at it like boot camp and know that God is preparing you for something? Can you look for it, look at it like you're going through your schooling days all over again? You, you need to learn two plus two. You need to learn some things that you're going to apply when God brings you to the place that He's anointed for you and appointed. It's a necessary thing. God is a preparing you for something. So today you may have walked in with a load of stuff and you may have thought, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want you to know that God's waiting on you to be like that one leper who will come to him and say, God, I walked in carrying a load. I was scathed all over, scaly from head to toe. You spoke the word. God, I've been delivered, and I, I just can't sit still any longer. i got to come, and I've got to give praise to the one who delivered me. Would you stand with me today, Brother Rick, singing a song for us? I've wandered from Would you come? Altars are open. From God. You want to be socially distant? That'd be a good place to be this morning, right there at the altar. Just you and God, amen? You and God, right there at the altar. Hallelujah. God, I'm bringing all of my troubles. I'm bringing all of my cares. Lord, I'm confessing that you've taken me the right way. And I'm giving it to you today. Lord, I'm not complaining. Lord, I'm grateful that you walked me through the valley. God, I'm grateful that you took me through the ferny, furnace of fire. I'm so thankful, Lord, that you've taken me through the battle with the giants. Lord, you delivered me out of all of my roads, out of all of my ways. Hallelujah. Many years 
I've been putting off, surrendering myself like I should, Lord. I now but now, I'm, I'm through with that. I'm not going to put it off anymore. Lord, this is the right way, God. This is the life you give me. It's been a life full of blessings. I am full. Lord, I'm coming, Lord, I'm coming home. Seeking your blessings and your anointing. Pray that God has given you today what you need Amen. to recognize. Oh, listen, some of us got many miles behind us. I, I feel like I got way more miles behind me than I got ahead of me. But in those miles, God has been so gracious to me. He has blessed me in, in the good times. But I got to tell you, he's been with me in the bad, too. Yeah, that's right. And he has, he has taken those things to help shape me and mold me into what he wants me to be. I pray that I'll be faithful to him in all ways. I pray that you also will be faithful to the Lord, to follow him no matter what, to praise him no matter what, to lift his name up in the good times and in the bad, because he is the one that leads your way. I'm going to pray and give you a dismissal, and um, of course, uh, we'll be letting you go out. I'd like to get make sure my deacons will prop the doors open for you going out the rear of the sanctuary. You guys want to go ahead and do that, uh, please, and make sure that there's an opportunity for you to be able to get out. Um, and because um, this is the time when you, you'll be getting a little closer to each other, so we ask you to, to don your mask again. Somebody said, uh, I heard somebody speaking earlier about the mask don't protect you. Uh, the masks are for others. That more than they are for you. Right. So, and uh, just to honor um, uh, the fact that, that you're trying to respect other people's space and their health, and you want to make sure. Um, now, I know everybody's got an opinion whether we're getting hyped or not. Uh, I'm not willing to take that chance. I just, I just want you to know that uh, I, I want you to make sure we'll continue to do this. We're now open on Sunday evening also, so we'll be back here at 6 o'clock once again, and then we'll be back on uh, Wednesday night. And we're also doing Bible study on Tuesdays. We'll be back in in-person Bible study. Uh, if we have a room full of people, then we'll set up in the sanctuary so that we can spread out a little bit. But um, I want to thank you guys for your patience as we come back to um, our new normal. Okay, let me pray over you and let you be dismissed. Father, we thank you for what, um, what you've done and all that you're doing. I bless you for who you are. I recognize, God, that um, today that you've been addressing our hearts because sometimes we get bogged down in our stubbornness and we don't want to change. We don't, wanna, we don't want to be affected by what we're going through. And I believe this COVID thing has been one of them. Uh, it's, it's, it's affected us, and, and for those uh, that stubbornly uh, resist that, Lord, I, I wonder about their, uh, their reliance upon you and whether or not, God, that uh, as we move through it, if we're going to be able to find ourselves always willing to be able to uh, trust you and walk in your ways, uh, no matter what comes or what goes. Uh, so we're grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to be here today. We believe that this is a, a blessing from God, 
And we thank you for the place that we have to worship. And everyone, Lord, as we um, go our separate ways for the remainder of this day, I pray that blessings will be what our heart and our mind is set upon, how God has directed us in the right path. I give you glory and praise and thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys and thank you for being here. Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our worship service. It is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his Lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904-924-8240 or you can email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, at L-R-B-C-J-A-X dot org. Until next time, may God be richly blessing you.